Welcome back. I'm Robert Breaker, and I've got lots of emails about this question. I mean, so many emails that I said, well, you know what I need to do? I need to make a message about this for our Sunday morning service and hopefully answer those questions that many people have. So many people have been sending me questions, and, and the biggest question, the most asked question lately in the last, oh, two, three weeks has been, Brother Breaker, is it possible to know the day and the hour of the return of Jesus Christ? And they've asked that for many different reasons, and I, I don't get involved. They say there's some people on the internet that say, nope, you can never know the day or the hour. <laughs> and then they say, but then there's other, other preachers on the internet that say, yeah, it's this very day and this very day hour. So which is it? Can we know the day and hour of when Jesus returns, or can we not? Well, we're going to go to the scriptures today and try to answer that question. I'm not going to give my opinion about it. I want to know what the Bible itself says about it. Also, let me say from the beginning of this that I am not, and I repeat, not trying to give a date for the rapture of the church. This video is not my prophecy or my prognostication of on this day and on this hour the rapture will take place. Not in your life. I'm not doing that. But I am going to give you some things that, that could mark a future time in which the rapture might be. And I say it might be, and I'm going to, I'm going to do kind of like a reporter. You know, back in high school I took a class on reporting, and I always liked the idea of, of a true reporter. You know, not fake news that we see today, but a true reporter is someone that reports on what they've seen, and they try to give you the who, what, when, where, why, and how. And they try to give you facts, and they try to tell you, well, this is taking place. Whether you know it or not, in the internet and, and all over the world, there's some, some great men preaching, and they're giving out videos on a lot of different subjects, and they're giving out a lot of good information. And it just might be that God is using them to give us something. So I'm not going to give a date for when I think the rapture will be. I'm not a date setter setting the rapture. But I will show you some things that are being said on the internet and being shown that point to, wow, it looks like the rapture could very well be soon and it could very well be on a certain time. But I am not dogmatically saying that it will be on that time. What I want to deal with today is, can we know the day or the hour? That's a great question, and the Bible has the answer. Many people will go to Matthew chapter 24 and verse 36. So go there with me, if you will, to Matthew chapter 24 and verse 36. A companion passage is Mark 13, 32. And many preachers will go to Matthew chapter 24 and verse 36, and they will read this verse, and it says, But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. And they will beat the pulpit, and they will say, Jesus says no man will ever know the day or the hour of his return and his coming. But there's some questions. First of all, when did Jesus say that? You know, the Bible tells us to study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And when we study the Bible, we need to know how to rightly divide. And whenever we read the Bible, you know what we need to do? We need to ask, who said that? When did they say that? And why did they say that? And to when does it apply? Now what we just read was Jesus Christ saying, and he said correctly, he said, no man knows the day or the hour. But when Jesus said that, he was right here on the earth in his earthly ministry. And he says, no man knows the day or the hour, but my Father, which is in heaven. So while he was on earth, Jesus says, I don't know the day or the hour, but my Father in heaven knows. Now if you know your Bible, guess what happens? The gospel, which we've seen many times, I try to put the gospel in every preaching that I do, is 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. Jesus Christ died, was buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. When Jesus rose again, guess what he did? He went up to heaven, and he's up there now with the Father. Now you know, it would be very naive <laughs> for God the Father not to tell the Son when the Son was to return again. So, first thing that I want to say as we read Matthew chapter 24, when Jesus says, But of that hour knoweth no man but my Father in heaven, He says that while He was on earth. After He rose again and went to heaven. Don't you think that God the Father and God the Son converse and talk? 
So don't you think that God the Father would have told the Son? Now, the question then is, did the Son tell us? So it's, it's one thing to say, no man knoweth the day or the hour, and say, no one can ever know, and take it out of this passage, because this was while Jesus was still on the earth. There's a whole lot more Bible that takes place after when Jesus said this. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take you to the Scriptures themselves, and we're going to try to answer the question, can we know the day or the hour? When Jesus said, no man knoweth the day or hour, he said that in his day while he was on earth. He said then, when he was alive on the earth, that no man knoweth the day or the hour. The question then is, can we know today? Because after that took place, a whole lot more stuff was given to us in our Bible. There were revelations after Jesus. One of the revelations God gave was to a man named Paul. And God revealed to Paul certain things. There was another man named John. And God gave some revelations to these men that do, according to the scriptures, make it sound as though we who are alive today and are Christians can know the day or the hour. Now, I'm saying we do. I'm saying it sounds like we can. Now, let me show you that. Go with me, if you will, to the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation was written by the Apostle John. It's a revelation of Jesus Christ, remember, after he went to heaven, to John. If Jesus says on earth, no man knoweth the day or hour, but then he went to heaven, and he said, only the Father knows, don't you think that the Father told Jesus? Because what Jesus did to Paul and what Jesus did to John was gave them some revelation of certain things to come. What if what he revealed to them was when the rapture might be? That's a good question. Let's look at that. Book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 1, the Bible says, the revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him, I guess that'd be God the Father, right? To show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Now, why do we have the book of Revelation? Why the book of Revelation is the revelation of Jesus Christ from God the Father to man, to Christians, to say people, to know about the certain things that are to come to pass. Now, what's to come to pass? Well, what is to come to pass is after the church age is the rapture of the church. After the rapture of the church is the tribulation period. After that is Armageddon, when Jesus returns from his throne on high, and sits on his throne in Jerusalem, and in the millennial kingdom reigns for 1,000 years. So, the book of Revelation is given us to know about certain things in the future. Now, what does it say in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 3? Again, there are people, and I've heard them, I've gotten emails from them, and over the years I've, I've heard many preachers get angry when you say, you know, I think the rapture could be this year. They get upset, they get angry, they get mad. They say, no, no man know it today or hour. And I say, well, brother, what, what about Revelation 3.3? <laughs> and uh, Revelation 3.3 appears to be the whole in their argument. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 3 is a revelation given by Jesus Christ to a certain church. Remember, it's the revelation of Jesus Christ given him by God the Father. On earth, Jesus said, no man knoweth the day or hour except Father in heaven. All right, Jesus rose again went to heaven. Then God the Father says, now, Jesus, reveal this to them so they'll know what will happen in the future. You think maybe uh, part of the revelation is that we may know when Jesus will come again? Revelation 3.3, 3, look what it says. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If, therefore, thou shalt not watch... I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. So Jesus says, if you are not watching for my appearing, then you won't know the hour. Okay? What is the opposite of that? If it's, if you don't watch, you won't know, isn't the opposite of that, if you are watching, then you will know? Doesn't that sound like, according to the scriptures, that you can know when Jesus will come? Because Jesus said here, if you're not watching, you won't know. Then that implies if you are watching, then you will know. Amen? <laughs> so I have a problem with people that say, no man knows the day or hour. No man. Jesus said no man. No, he said that in his time. During that time, no man knew the day or hour. 
But the book of Revelation is given to tell us things in the future where we might know some things. Is it possible to know the day or hour? Possibly. Possibly. Let's, let's look at this, okay? Can we know when Jesus will return at the rapture and of our Armageddon? Many say no. Okay. Well, let's look at the first time that Jesus came and let's ask this question, okay? Did they know when Jesus appeared the first time? Were they able to determine when Jesus came the first time? You see, in the Bible, there's two comings of Jesus Christ. Jesus comes the first time at his birth, and then the second time, uh, in every coming of Jesus Christ, he comes first and he comes second. The first coming of Jesus Christ has two parts. I have a good video on that. If you get a chance to go to uh, YouTube, look up the two comings of Jesus Christ. Every time in the first coming and the second coming of Jesus Christ, there's two parts or two stages. Part number one is when he's born. Part number two, Jesus comes back at the resurrection. And I'll just abbreviate that. And he appears to his disciples before he's caught up in Acts chapter 1 in the clouds. So there are two parts to the first coming of Jesus Christ. Second coming of Jesus Christ has two parts. Part number one is the rapture. And the second stage of his second coming is when he returns at Armageddon. Now, when Jesus appeared the first time, did Jesus Christ make known to the people that he was coming? Or did he just show up and surprise them? Do the Old Testament prophets tell us, no man knoweth the day or the hour that Messiah comes? Is that, is that what the Bible teaches? That nobody could ever know when Jesus would show up? And so those poor Pharisees... No, as a matter of fact, the opposite is true. When Jesus showed up, there were prophecy after prophecy after prophecy that the Messiah would come, and it even says when He would come. And besides that, oh my goodness, there was a star in heaven marking the coming of Jesus Christ. Go with me to Matthew chapter 2, and let me show you this. Do you see what I'm doing here? I'm saying... If we can't know the day or the hour of Jesus' second coming, then I guess we can't know the day or hour of the first coming. I mean, wouldn't that make sense? Did God tell us in the Old Testament a time to look for His first coming? If so, then wouldn't it stand to reason that God would tell us in the New Testament when to look for His second coming? What does the Bible teach? Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2 and verse 1 says, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. What? There's a star? Yes, there was a star that marked the coming of Jesus Christ when he came to be born of a virgin. Verse 3, When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled in all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. Okay, so he went to the Pharisees. And he asked them, uh, well, there's a star in heaven that marks the birth of the king of the Jews. We know that as the Messiah or the Christ. And he says, what does the Bible say about that? And they immediately, verse 5, started quoting scripture. That shows they knew their Bible and they knew where to look for the Messiah's coming. Verse 5, and they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea, For this it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor, and that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. Verse 8, And he said unto them, Go to Bethlehem, and, and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when he had found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. Well, he lied. He didn't want to worship him. He wanted to kill him, we see later in the context. But verse 9, when they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. So there was a marker in the heavens of the first coming of Jesus Christ. This star, today we call it the Star of Bethlehem. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but if you look up on YouTube, there was a man, I believe he was a lawyer, they made a documentary called the, the Star of Bethlehem, or the Bethlehem Star Documentary. I believe you can look it up. And he talks about this star and what it is. And what that uh, man found out is that this is an interesting star because this star shows up every 2,000 years. And this star showed up, and what it is, it's, it's two stars coming together in the heaven, two planets, I think, if I'm not mistaken. They get so close together that they get so bright they look like one star. And that one star is what's called the Star of Bethlehem. 
And according to this documentary, the man says that this star appears every 2,000 years. And according to the papers, this star appeared again 2,000 years later in 2015. We are now in 2017. So every 2,000 years or so, this star appears. Isn't that interesting? If it, if it marked the first coming, could it be possible, I'm just asking, that this star would appear, appear again to mark the second coming of Jesus? Interesting thought. Well, I had a thought. I uh, looked at that and said, well, this, this star appears every 2,000 years. I wonder what happened 2,000 years before Jesus when that star would have appeared again. And guess what I found out? That star appeared and it marked the birth of a man named Abraham. A guy told me one time, he says, Brother Breaker, you ought to read the book of Jasher. I said, what's the book of Jasher, or others pronounce it Hasher? And I said, uh, oh yeah, I remember. Is it in Samuel or Kings or one of those books? Uh, it talks about as it is written in the book of Hasher or Jasher. And uh, they said, yeah, yeah, it's mentioned in the Bible. Just like the book of Enoch is mentioned in the Bible. Extra canonical books. Now, I try to stay away from books that aren't in the Bible. Amen. I take the Bible, the canon of the Word of God, as the final authority. But someone sent me the book of Jasher and said, you ought to read it. It's pretty interesting. And I said, oh, well, I don't know if I'm going to believe it or not, but I'll read it. And the book of Jasher says that at the birth of Abraham... There was a star in heaven that appeared, and it marked the birth of this one guy, who just so happened to be the guy that God chose to be the father of the Jews. Huh. And it just so happens that was exactly 2,000 years before Jesus. And every 2,000 years that shows up, and it showed up, that star, to mark Jesus, who just so happens to be the king of the Jews. Now, you go back another 2,000 years, believe it or not, guess what you find out? That star, that star shows up and marks the birth of Adam. <laughs> so every 2,000 years, you've got a star showing up, a star they call the Bethlehem Star. It so, showed up here, father of the Jews, shows up here, king of the Jews, and it shows up here around 2015, and it stays till about 2017. What is that marking for the Jews? Well, it almost sounds like that star is always connected with the Jews. Or... God's calling a certain man to use a certain man. So what is that? Well, that's quite interesting. I don't know what to do with that except for the fact that God made the planets, God made the stars, and he said he made them for times and for seasons. Maybe they're markers in the heavens to mark something. We know for sure that it one happened here that marked the birth of Christ. And according to these people that can now go with this computer program, they could go back and find out indeed 2,000 years ago that star showed up and it is now here today. Could that star be a marker for the coming of Jesus Christ? No man knoweth the day or hour. Okay, then, but isn't it quite interesting that, that we have a marker in the heaven that, that kind of tells us that, hey, be on the lookout for something? <laughs> when Jesus Christ showed up the first time, when he was born of a virgin, there were many people that knew that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. And they read the book of Daniel, and they said, yep, it works out exactly that Jesus is the Messiah. He came from the prophesied time from the book of Daniel. So you go back to the book of Daniel, and uh, in the book of Daniel, we read this in Daniel chapter 9. You see, what I'm trying to get at here is when Jesus came the first time, he didn't just show up out of the blue one day and not tell anybody, hey, I'm not, I'm not going to tell anybody, I'm just going to show up. No, the opposite is true. He called prophets. He called these men to write down the prophecy. And in the stars, he put signs in the heaven, and he says, I'm coming. I'm here. Here I come. And there's markers everywhere, and there's scripture everywhere saying Jesus is coming. Daniel chapter 9, beginning there in verse 21. Yea, whilst I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. And he informed me and talked with me and said, O Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. At the beginning of thy supplications the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. Therefore understand the matter and consider the vision. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city and to finish the transgression, and make an end of sins, and to make reconciliation for iniquity, and bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Verse 25, Know, therefore, and understand, 
that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince, shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks. And the street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. So, he's saying, remember, when this happens exactly this many times, which is 70 weeks, which would be 490 years, this is going to take place. What? The coming of Messiah, the Prince. So when Jesus came and was born, he gave to Daniel to know the day that Jesus would show up. He gave him the very months that it would be until the coming of the Messiah. And it was 483 weeks, because after that there would be another one week, which by the way was a week of years. And I could continue there, but I'll let you read this in your own time, the rest of Daniel chapter 9. But I want you to get a hold of this. The book of Daniel is a book of prophecy, and God gave a timeline to his prophet, Daniel, of when he would come the first time. And then he, the Messiah, showed up at that time that he prophesied he would, and he put a star in heaven to say, hey, this is when I'm coming. And the Jews should have known that Jesus Christ was their Messiah because he fulfilled the prophecy. So God always tells us what he'll do and when he will do it. So if God told us the first time when he would show up, and it came out to be exactly at the predetermined time that he would show up, and it came at the prophesied time that he said he would, then the question arises, why wouldn't God tell us the second time of the second coming of when he would come again at the rapture? You see, why would God tell us the first time but then say, nope, but the next time no man knows the day or hour, so you know, when I come back at the rapture, you'll never know. I'm just going to show up and I'm going to surprise you. <laughs> okay. Well, what about what the Bible says? Let's go over here to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Can we know the day or the hour? Many people will say no, and all they do is go to the book of Matthew and then say, Jesus said we can't. No, he didn't. Jesus said he didn't, and that no man during his day knew. But he didn't say after him no man would know. There's a whole lot more Bible written after Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John. And God called this guy named Paul and gave Paul some revelations. And I personally believe that God revealed to Paul when he would return at the rapture. I'm going to show that to you. Now, I'm not going to give you the exact day or hour, but I'm going to give you some possibilities of, of when it must be. And I hope this will be a blessing to you. Again, I'm not setting the date of the rapture. I'm trying to scripturally go to the book and ask the question, did Jesus give us prophecies of when he would return at the rapture? If you go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, you'll find out what the Apostle Paul says is very different from what Jesus said. You see, Paul's over here. Jesus is back here. Jesus said back here before he even died on the cross that no man knows the day or the hour except his Father in heaven. But we're told in the book of Revelation that when Jesus went up to heaven, he talked to the Father, and the Father told Jesus what John should write. And we're told by Paul that Jesus gave Paul certain revelations as well. So God revealed to Paul and John certain revelations. And look at what it says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1. But of the times and of the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. And people will stop right there and say, See, you don't know when the thief is coming. So when Jesus Christ returns, he comes as a thief in the night. No man knows the day or hour. No man knows the day or hour. Okay, let, let me read a little bit more before you so hastily... Uh, want to to um, cry aloud that no man knoweth the day or hour. Let's read on a couple more verses. Verse 3, For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with a child, and they shall not escape. He says when the Lord comes, it's going to be like a woman with child. Well, what is a woman with child? Well, within nine months you can know when that baby is born. So is Paul saying you can know within nine months of when the rapture might be? Sounds like it. Verse 4, But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Now, did you hear what I just read? Paul says that Jesus Christ will come as a thief in the night, but he says, But you, those who are saved, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. What is he saying? That we can know. If we know, and it doesn't come upon us like a thief, 
and we can know within nine months, then we can know pretty close to when the rapture might be. Verse 5, ye, For ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. So what is the Apostle Paul saying? The Apostle Paul is saying, guess what? You can know when the Lord is coming back. So you can know. It is possible to know when the Lord comes back because he says he won't come upon you as a thief in the night. Remember what Paul said in Revelation 3.3. 3, if you watch, then he will not come as a thief upon you. So it is possible to know when Jesus is coming. Now let's look at uh, 1 Thessalonians, and I believe that the key to all of this... Actually, let's go to 1 Corinthians first. I believe to the key of finding out when Jesus will return is to go to the Apostle Paul. Because the Apostle Paul is our Apostle. Romans 11.13, Paul says he is the Apostle to the Gentiles. And God revealed some mysteries to the Apostle Paul. In fact, there are seven mysteries in the Bible, some things that God revealed unto Paul. One of the things that God revealed unto Paul was the rapture of the church. Now watch what Paul says about the rapture. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50. Verse 50, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall all not sleep. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. At the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. And so in this corruption shall I put on incorruption, and this mortal shall I put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. And I can continue there. But clearly this is a passage about the rapture of the church. Now, go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. We're talking about the rapture today. A lot of people want to say that no one knows when the rapture is coming. Okay, well Paul gives us some clues. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, I'll begin in verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Paul says when it comes to the, the rapture, don't be ignorant. But yet many people preach today, we are ignorant because no man can know the day or hour. But Paul says, don't be ignorant. Okay, what does he say here? He says, verse 14, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which were asleep, which are asleep. Verse 16, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of, archange, of the archangel, and the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Verse 17, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall they ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Now, people say, well, how do you get the date of the rapture out of that? Well, it's quite interesting. Remember what it said in 1 Corinthians 15, it will be at the last trump. Now, before I can take you there and show you what I want to get to you, I've got to remind you what the five feasts of Israel, the seven feasts of Israel are. Seven feasts of Israel. And if we look at prophecy, we look at the scriptures, we look at the dates, we look at everything, we can find some things in the Bible that point to clues of just when the rapture might be. Again, I'm not saying the date of the rapture must be on such and such a day. I'm just trying to answer the question whether or not we could possibly know, as Christians, the day of the hour. Is it possible that we could know? There are seven feasts in Israel. And Jesus Christ fulfills every one of these seven feasts. The first feast of Israel is the feast of Passover. Then comes the feast of unleavened bread. Then comes the feast of... Uh, Passover, unleavened bread. Uh, let's see, the next one will be first fruits. Then comes the feast of Pentecost, 50 days after. Then comes the feast of trumpets. Then comes the day of atonement, one of the feasts. And after this comes the feast of, are you ready for this? Tabernacles. Now, each one of these feasts is Jesus Christ. It's a type of Jesus Christ. Now the Apostle Paul knew more Bible probably than any one of the other apostles. He was a lawyer. He was trained by Gamaliel. He knew the Bible. The Apostle Paul went away for about three years and just sat down and read his Bible over and over and over again. And it's just like a light bulb going off. It's just over and over reading his Old Testament. 
That's Jesus. That's talking about Jesus. That's talking about Jesus. And the Apostle Paul gives us some clues. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7, because what we find through Paul's epistles is him telling us that Jesus is the feasts, and that Jesus fulfills the feasts. Now, Jesus has already fulfilled four of these feasts in his first coming. Only four. These, by the way, are called the spring feasts. And these over here are called the fall feasts feasts. So the first coming of Jesus Christ, he fulfilled all four of the spring feasts. The next time he comes, the second coming, then he's going to fulfill the fall feasts. But let me just give you an example of this. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7. 1 Corinthians 5, 7, again, Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7, "...purge out therefore the old leaven, that you may be a new lump." as ye are unleavened, for even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. When Jesus Christ shed his blood on Calvary, he died as the Passover lamb. So Jesus is the Passover. He fulfilled that feast. In uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 16, the Apostle Paul clearly tells us, the cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? Jesus Christ is the unleavened bread. Even Jesus said here on the earth, I am the bread of life. So Jesus fulfilled unleavened bread. For when Jesus died as the Passover lamb, he went into the, what, earth? And unleavened bread, why is it unleavened? So that it doesn't corrupt. I've noticed one thing. If you make real bread, within three days, it starts getting moldy. <laughs> Jesus laid three days and three nights in the grave. But he never got moldy. He never saw corruption. His body didn't corrupt. As a missionary for years in Honduras, I found out something that most people don't think about because here in America we don't have to worry about it. We have undertakers. And when someone dies, the undertaker takes them, takes out all their blood, and then puts in formaldehyde, and then the body's preserved. And it's common in America today to have a funeral three, four, five, sometimes a week or two after a person dies. And we don't worry about the person being corrupted because the person has had their blood taken out and they've been preserved. But in Honduras, there was a time or two when I had to preach a funeral in the backwoods of nowhere, where there weren't any undertakers, no formaldehyde, no nothing to preserve the body. And if you didn't get that body in the grave within 24 hours, it would begin to expand, and the gases inside that dead body would blow up, and a person could literally explode because of that corruption inside their body. So you have to bury someone quick. And I remember doing a funeral in Honduras and uh, it had been about 16, 17 hours and they had cotton in a person's nose and in their ears and you could see that slowly watch their face just start to expand. That person needed to be put in the, in the grave as soon as possible before they stank. And that's what our body is. It's a corrupt body and after death it corrupts. But Jesus Christ is the uncorruptible unleavened bread, and his body in the grave saw no corruption. So Jesus is that. Now, what else is Jesus Christ? Well, go to 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 20. 1 Corinthians 15, look what he says. The Apostle Paul, But every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterwards they that are Christ that is coming. So the Apostle Paul says that Jesus Christ is the Passover, he's the unleavened bread, and he's the firstfruits. Now we also know that Jesus Christ what happened to him? Well, Pentecost is 50 days after what? 50 days after Passover. So Jesus died. He was in the grave three days and three nights. Seven days later, he showed up to the apostles, and for 40 days, he walked around with them. 40 plus 7 plus 3 equals 50. On the 50th day, the day of Pentecost, the Bible tells us that after Jesus has risen from the dead, he came back, and that's when he went up in the clouds, Acts chapter 1. So Jesus was here on the earth for 50 days, and then he got, I guess you could say, raptured out as he went up to heaven, and he said, in like manner, he will come again. So the first four fruit feasts of Israel have been fulfilled, and each one of them points to Jesus. What is the next feast that is to be fulfilled on the feast of the Jews? The next one is the Feast of Trumpets. Now, if Paul knew his Bible and he knew the Jewish feasts, he would have known that these four were Jesus and they were passed. And he would have known the very next feast to be fulfilled is the Feast of Trumpets. Now if you begin to look at the Jews and what they believe about the Feast of Trumpets, it is amazing. 
The Feast of Trumpets <coughs> is an amazing feast, and it begins in the fall. And all of these feasts, they all have to do with the moon. And oftentimes, they can tell when the feast will start by in advance, months and months and months in advance, knowing what the moon is going to do. But when the Feast of Trumpets comes, it's a little iffy. The moon is, is in one position or another, and it's confusing, and they've always called, the Jews have always called the Feast of Trumpets, the feast that no man knows the day or the hour. Because you cannot know within 24 hours of exactly what the Feast of Trumpets will be, because it's iffy. It's whether or not the moon does just what it should this way or that way, on whether or not the Feast of Trumpets starts on this day or the day before. So all these other feasts, looking at the moon, you can, uh, you can guesstimate correctly when it will fall, except for the Feast of Trumpets. The Feast of Trumpets has always been that one feast that the Jews always looked at as, well, we can't know exactly when that's going to happen until the day before. So the Feast of Trumpets is called by the Jews since the time of Paul, since the time of Jesus, the feast that no man knows the day or hour, because you can't know within 24 hours when that feast will start. I'm getting goosebumps. Now, you know what they do on the Feast of Trumpets? On the Feast of Trumpets, the custom of the Jews is to blow a trumpet 100 times. And the Jews have always called that very last time that they blew the trumpet on the Feast of Trumpets, they called that last blow of the trumpet the last trump. That is the Jewish idiom. That is the word that the Jews called the last trumpet blast on the Feast of Trumpets. Now, with that stated, was Paul telling us that the date of the rapture will be on the Feast of Trumpets? Could Jesus, when he said, no man knoweth the day or hour, have insinuated because it's going to be on a feast where nobody knows the day or hour until, you know, a little bit before? It sounds like to me that Paul is pointing to the Feast of Trumpets, the next feast that has to be fulfilled by Jesus, as the feast when Jesus must come. So I believe, personally, that the Lord Jesus Christ, when He comes at the rapture, He'll have to fulfill the feast, because He's already fulfilled the first four. Most likely, it's going to be on the Feast of Trumpets that the rapture takes place. If Jesus is fulfilling all the feasts. Now, after the Feast of Trumpets is the Feast of Atonement. It takes place seven days later. And the Feast of Atonement is a feast in which they make an atonement for Israel. They sacrifice and it's a sacrifice for the entire nation. Then, much later, not too much later, is the Feast of Tabernacles, and all this lines up. Here Jesus fulfills the first four here. The next three are fulfilled here. Rapture, rapture takes out the church. What happens in the tribulation? God goes back to dealing with the Jews, and the Jews need to make an atonement as a nation by building their temple and sacrificing. Then Jesus returns at Armageddon to tabernacle among us here on earth. He's going to sit in the throne as the tabernacle on earth for a thousand years. So Jesus will fulfill these future feasts. So the question is, can we know the day or hour? Is Paul telling us by revelation that Jesus will return on a future feast of trumpets? Well, when is the Feast of Trumpets this year? Well, it's September 23rd. You say, well, I thought you couldn't know the day or hour. Well, we have today what they never had back then. We have computers. You can download programs on your computer, and you can look, and you can fast-forward the moon, and you can find out on the computer which day exactly that the Feast of Trumpets will take place. And isn't it interesting that September 23rd, 2017, this year, is the Feast of Trumpets? You know what's more interesting than that? <laughs> Here we have some amazing stuff. I don't even know if I have time to get into this. But the year 2017 is the 70th year anniversary of the nation of Israel. You see, in 1947, Israel became a nation. Now, many people say, you're wrong, it was 1948. No, no, I've looked this up online. Many other people have as well. And I've read many articles that said... June, or no, excuse me, May of 1948, Israel organized their government, 
And the article says, after the UN had voted in 1947, six months before, for Israel to become a nation. So the vote by the United Nations for Israel to become a nation took place in 1947. They didn't exactly organize a government until 1948, but the United Nations declared Israel a nation in 1947. Now what did Jesus say? He said, 70 years are determined upon your, oh, excuse me, Daniel said, 70 years are determined upon thy people. Well, what did Jesus say? This generation shall not pass. What is a generation? In the Bible, a generation is 70 years. So 1947 plus 70 years takes us to 2017. And there are many people on the internet saying 2017 is going to be the rapture because that's the 70th year of the nation of Israel. And there's all these things that, that point to the rapture taking place on September 23rd, 2017. Now, I'm not saying that. I'm saying, I, well, I hope so. <laughs> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to be like a reporter and just report some of the things that are on the Internet of, of people saying that they think that it's possible that most likely to them the rapture could be this year, 2017. Now, if it's not, it's not. But I thought I'd throw this out here for you. You know, they ask, can we know the day or the hour? And many say, no. Well, they sure are not studying their Bible. Because when you study the feasts, it looks like it's going to have to be on a Feast of Trumpets. A Feast of Trumpets in 2017 is exactly 70 years after the United Nations declared Israel to be a nation. Well, that's interesting. Not only that, on December the 23rd, 2016, the United Nations got together and had a vote. You know what they voted? They voted that the, the Israel has no right to that land. <laughs> what? 1947, they voted and allowed them to have the land. Then December 23rd, 2016, there was a vote by the United Nations in which the United Nations says, no, Israel doesn't have any right to that land. September 23rd, 2017, is exactly nine months after December 23rd, 2016. Boy, I'm getting goosebumps. Remember what Paul said, when they say peace and safety, it's like a woman in travail? A woman is in travail nine months. We're starting to see some amazing things happen to Israel. Nine months before Israel was voted, and you can't have that land anymore. Guess what? In, um, in September, the United Nations is going to meet in their Peace and Security Council meeting. Paul says, when you hear peace and safety, sudden destruction cometh. As a woman in travail, nine months. So I'm reading my Bible, I'm looking at this stuff, and I'm saying, wow, it, it seems to correspond, you know. Uh, if I'm looking for the rapture and I want to look for a date when it most possibly would be, I would look for a future Feast of Trumpets. And how interesting that this future feature of Trumpets, 2017, starts to look like a pretty good candidate. What's even weirder is we just had an eclipse. All right, as I preach this, this is still August of 2017. But there was an eclipse that took place in August. I can't remember the date. And I saw that eclipse. I happened to be in Maryland, of all places, and I didn't get to see it up close. But when I started watching, it looked like this. And I kept watching it, and it looked like this. And when I finished watching, it looked like this. And I was up in Maryland watching this eclipse. This eclipse was exactly 33 days before September 23rd, 2017. People say, well, Jesus died at 33. This eclipse is exactly 40 days before the Jewish Day of Atonement. Now, this eclipse took place before in 1776. Huh? That's a notable date because that was the date of independence for the United States of America. This eclipse is amazing because, and I'm not going to draw a good map of America, but here's America. This eclipse went from west to east just like that. And you know what's amazing? Very seldom does an eclipse take place from west to east. Usually it's from east to west because things travel from east to west, the sun, the moon. This eclipse went backwards. Exactly seven years later, they're saying now, there's going to be another eclipse just like this one, and watch what it's going to do. It's going to go this way. Putting a gigantic X on the United States of America. 
Well, that's weird. Does that mean anything? I don't know, but it's amazing how God puts signs in heaven. If you're looking at the heaven, you'd be like, wow. Now, there's more to it than that. This eclipse going from west to east, back in about 700-something B.C., there was a guy named Jonah. And I was reading something, and I saw online some videos. People have gone back and looked this up. When Jonah went and preached to Nineveh, the day that he showed up coming out of the whale, there was an eclipse in Nineveh. And it did the exact same thing as this eclipse just did. It went from west to east. Jesus said, there'll be no sign given to this generation except the sign of Jonah. Jonah preached. And remember what Jonah preached? He preached, repent, for in 40 days God will destroy you. And the 40 days was marked by the starting of an eclipse. This eclipse that just took place in America, 40 days before the Jewish day of atonement. Is God telling the Jews, hey Jews, get ready. Repent! So I'm going to go back to dealing with you soon, after the rapture. I don't know, but many people are saying that on the internet. It could very well be. It could very well be. It would be amazing. It would work out great. Because if there was a, a rapture on the Feast of Trumpets of 2017, then seven days later is the Day of Atonement. That would give the Jews time to rebuild their temple and make their atonement according to that feast. So I'm not saying that there's a day and the hour, and this is, but it is interesting that many people are saying that. I think you can know in the future when the rapture may be. But I'm, without a doubt, I believe that the rapture is going to be on the Feast of Trumpets because the rapture is a fulfillment of one of the seven feasts. Now, is it the Feast of Trumpets 2017? Could it be 2018? Could it be 2019? Could it be 2021? 2025? I don't know. But I do know one thing. God works through the Jubilees. And I look at the Jubilees of Israel. A Jubilee is every 50th year. And in the book of, of Numbers, I believe, and other books in the Old Testament, God tells about the Jubilees, and He says that it's a time every 50 years in a Jubilee year that Jews are supposed to get their land back. So I take the year 2017, and I say, I wonder if anything happened 50 years before that. What is 50 years before 2017? Uh, that's 1967. 1967 was the Six Days War. <laughs> when Israel got their land back, and they were attacked by Egypt and all these other countries, and to this day, people look at that and say, we still don't know how those Jews won. They were attacked on all sides. It was a miracle. Yeah, because that's God's chosen of people, the Jews. What if I go back another 50 years? Well, that falls in 1917. 1917, what happened then? The Balfour, the Balfour Declaration. Now, some people say it was 2018, but I've, I've found it's 2017. Balfour Declaration, what was that? That was a declaration in World War I in which they took back Israel, the Palestine, and they declared the Jews can come back to their land. The Bible says every 50 years they get the land back. So the Jews have a declaration, come back to the land. They're there for 50 years, and the land's tried to be taken from them. And guess what? They got their land back. Now in 2016, the United Nations votes and says, no, the Jews don't get their land. We vote to the United Nations that they can't have their land. Well, looks like to me, God's going to do some kind of a mighty victory for the Jews and give them their land so that they can do their atonement. And it looks like to me it just might be on this year. If God, you know, is a God of numbers that follows the calendar and does certain things in a certain way, which I believe He is. Now, should I get into this? I don't know. If you go to YouTube, you've probably seen it because there's so many videos about this sign of September 23rd, 2017. I've made a video about it. And in that video, I said, and I hope people watch the video, <laughs> that I am not making this video to date the rapture. I am not saying that on September 23rd, 2017, the rapture will take place. I'm not saying that. I am asking the question, is it possible? As I look at the evidence, I, I wonder. So I'm not setting a date, but I am saying, wow, this is kind of interesting. Revelation chapter 12 says, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, 
and upon her head a crown with twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another woman in uh, wonder in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them on the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be devoured for, for to devour her, and as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all nations with the rod of his iron, and her child was caught up, and God and to his throne. Now, this is a picture of a woman. I'm going to have to draw a stick figure because I'm not very good at this. Who has all these planets above her. She's got the moon at her feet. And it's talking about something. It says it's a wonder in heaven. Well, there's people on the internet who have gotten these computer programs that show the stars. And they said, well, the only things we know that are in the heaven are the constellations. So they've gone to the constellation Virgo, which kind of looks something like like this, and I'm not good again at drawing, and they found that the only time in the history of the world where there's anything in the stars that look like what it's talking about here is September 23rd, 2017, when you have this woman having the moon down here, having those 12 stars around her head, and, and it looks like that's exactly what the Apostle John saw in this vision. Is it? You say, well, that's easy to dismiss, is it? 7,000 years back, 7,000 years future, they've gone through this computer program to see if any other time in history this constellation Virgo does that. And the only time in history when it matches up exactly with Revelation 12 is September 23rd, 2017. What are the odds? But you know, it's just a coincidence, right? You know what's even more of a coincidence? The planet Jupiter goes through the sky like this. It goes forward and back. It goes forward and back. It goes forward and back. And so if you were to trace the planet Jupiter in the sky, you would see it going forward and then looping back. And then coming forward over, over the years. And it does a loop every nine months. So the planet Jupiter goes around and comes back. It just so happens that the planet Jupiter went like this, like it was in the womb of this woman. And it entered around December 23rd, 2016, and it will exit her womb on September 23rd, 2017. Looking just like a man-child being given birth. Now, you can't make these things up. Could God be showing when the rapture is? Is it possible that in the Bible we have clues to when the rapture could be? I'm not going to run around and say, no man knows the day or hour. I'm going to study the scriptures. The Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman needeth not to be ashamed, rightly to dividing the word of truth. And from what I see, Jesus said, no man knows the day or hour when he was on the earth. Because we have what we have is the postponement theory, and we have the opportunity of the Jews to accept Jesus as their Messiah. But the book of Acts is a transitional book, and they rejected him. So there was all these things that could or couldn't take place. It was all dependent upon what the Jews did, and the Jews rejected their Messiah. So Jesus said, okay, Paul, okay, John, I'm going to give you some prophecy. I'm going to give you some revelation, and I'm going to hide in there the, the date of my future coming. And that's what it sounds like Jesus did. Because, oh, back here, Jesus told Daniel, Daniel, write this down. And it all pointed to the first coming of Jesus. If God did that and gave us the scriptures and the prophecies of when he was coming the first time, why would he not give us that of when he was coming the second time? Go with me, if you will, Amos chapter 3 and verse 7. You see, the Bible is a book of history. It's past history and it's future history. And God, before He does something, He tells us what He's going to do. And I believe that in the Bible, hidden in the clues and in the scriptures, is very well, could very well be the date of the rapture. Now, I'm not going to tell you what it is. <laughs> um, all I know is that it looks like it's very soon. I really think that Jesus is coming soon for His bride, the church. But one thing I do know, God gave us the feasts, and you cannot deny that the next feast to be fulfilled will be the Feast of Trumpets. So wouldn't it stand to reason that, that the next fulfillment of prophecy would be Jesus coming at the last trump? 
The trump is blown on the Feast of Trumpets. Amos chapter 3 and verse 7, look what it says. Amos 3, 7, Surely the Lord will, not, will do nothing, but He revealeth His secret unto His servants, the prophets. God won't do anything without revealing what He's going to do first to His prophets. So did He do that? Isn't that what the New Testament is? Isn't that what Revelation and Paul's all together taken? Could it be that Paul tells us that, hey, look for a future feast of trumpets and that's when the rapture will be? And could it be that Jesus Christ revealed to John, hey, look at the constellations and when they do this one certain thing, well, that marks the day and the hour of when I'm coming back. I'm not saying it does. I'm saying there are a lot of people on YouTube that say that that's what it is. And I think it's worthy of future study. Is the rapture soon? Could it possibly be this year? Again, I'm not saying that it is, but many people are. Do they have a point? Do they give us a reason to look for Jesus? Should we look for the rapture? You know, a lot of these people say, no man knows the hour. They say, don't even look for his appearing because we can't ever know when it will be. Okay, so why does the Bible tell me in Titus chapter 2, in verse 13, why does it say, looking for that blessed hope, and the glorious appearing of the great God and Savior Jesus Christ. How am I supposed to be looking for something if I don't know when it is? Aren't I supposed to be searching and looking in the Scriptures? What does it say in 2 Timothy 4.8? 2 Timothy 4.8 says, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord the righteous judge shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them that love his appearing. I love the appearing of Jesus Christ. I love going through the scriptures and looking up verses and trying to find oh, when could he come back? Could it be this year? Could it be this? And I look at all the Jubilees and I look at this up there and I look at the Bethlehem star. Whatever happens, something big has got to happen for Israel soon. Because every time that star shows up, it marks something for the Jews. Well, if God's going to do something big for the Jews in 2017, well, doesn't that mean the rapture has to take place to get the church out for God to go back to dealing with the Jews? I mean, we're really close. Everything's in place. The mark of the beast is already there. They've got the chip ready to inject in people. Uh, I forgot to mention the Jews back in July of 2017, they got a hold of the Temple Mount. They own that. They control that. Everything I've read says that the Jews are more than ready right now to build their temple. They have all the instruments made. They have every stone, and they can build that temple at any moment. And if the rapture took place, then they could build the temple. And on the feast, they're ready on the Feast of Atonement 2017. They could sacrifice and fulfill that scripture as well. So, this is what the Bible teaches. That yes, it is possible to know. God told us in the Old Testament prophecies of when Jesus would be born within two years. Because we're told in those passages that within two years they knew when Jesus was born. If that was an Old Testament prophecy, and they knew within two years when Jesus was born, why wouldn't God give us prophecies in the New Testament to know when Jesus was born? Oh, oh, yeah, that's right, He did. He gave us revelations. He gave us John's books and Paul's writings. There's a star that marked the first coming of Jesus. That star is back. Could it be marking that Jesus is coming again? The feast must be fulfilled. Here's a future feast, the Feast of Trumpets. Paul tells us about the rapture, and he says blatantly, we are not in darkness that that day should overtake us as a thief. Doesn't that sound like we could know? John gives us a revelation about Jesus Christ and future events and the tribulation. The Armageddon tells us all about it. And he says in Revelation 3, 3, oh, and by the way, <laughs> he says, oh, and by the way, you know, if you're not looking, then you won't know. Okay, so if you are looking, then you would know. How about this one? Let's go to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 12. You know, I'm not trying to cause an argument. I'm not trying to fight with anyone. All I want you to do is to get into your Bible and study and read and get close to the Lord. I hope He comes soon. I'm not saying that He's coming on this date. Amen? I'm just saying, wouldn't it be nice? But I do want you to study for yourself and look and love is appearing. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 12. Uh, oh, sorry, not verse 12. Uh, verse 24 and 25. My bad. Hebrews 24, uh, 10, 24, and 25. Look what it says here. And let us consider one another to one another to provoke unto love and to good works, 
Verse 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but also exhorting another, and so much the more, now watch this, as you see the day approaching. <laughs> the Apostle Paul says, look, we ought to love each other even more as we see the day approaching. Oh yeah, but we can never see the day approaching because no man can know the day or hour, right? You know, maybe it's possible that we can know the day or hour. And if we look at the feasts, we look at the stars, we look at the, what God's doing with the, the moons and there's some for times and seasons and everything. We look at the, the jubilees, maybe we can know when the Lord is coming. I will not set a date and say it will be on this day, on this hour. I just wanted to show you what other people are saying in the hopes that maybe you might look into it yourself. But I will say this, Jesus is coming soon. Are you ready? Are you saved? To me, that's the most important thing, is your salvation. The last thing that I want is for you to be left behind. Are you saved? So I hope that answers the question. Many say that no man knoweth the day or hour. Why? Well, I do not concur. I think it is possible through the Scriptures, through all that God's given us in the Word of God, through the prophecies, through the revelations, through the jubilees, through the stars, through everything that God's shown, he has made it abundantly clear that if you are interested, you can search it out and you can find for yourself. And you can see and discern the day and the times and the seasons. And all signs point to Jesus' soon return at the rapture. Are you ready? Will you come to Him for salvation? If you're not saved, come to Jesus for salvation before it's everlasting too late. God bless you and we'll see you next time.